Hello, good morning, and welcome to the third sessions of Ignite Talks. I'm Frank from Barcelona. Uh, it's very nice to being here, and today we're going to uh, listen and enjoy five amazing five minutes presentations uh, in different formats, different things. And we start with Martin and Linda uh, with a Scratch presentation made in Scratch. So thank you very much. Take the same Thank you. Five minutes. Hi everyone. Um, we are going to talk about why the Scratch Wiki is important for Scratch and how you can create your own Scratch Wiki in your own language. So for those of you who don't know, the Scratch Wiki is a platform like Wikipedia but in small for Scratch. That means you can search up all kinds of keywords there and get tons of information, which is really helpful. There are also guides and tutorials and everything that one needs to learn on their own how to scratch. Um, so we have at the moment many international scratch wikis. We have wikis in many languages and we want to get more languages on board. That's, that's why we are talking here and we hope you join us. Um, so, I'm just jumping over this quickly because we don't have so much time. So why should we have Scratch wikis and why in different languages? It's, I think, very important for kids to transfer their experiences to others because if you teach others, if you explain it to others, then you know you understood something. And the wiki is a great platform to explain something to others. Um, also, it's important because it builds communities. Our Scratch community in Germany is built through the wiki to big parts and it can help build communities in other languages as well, which again helps people learn about Scratch in that language. Then it makes learning more efficiently if someone understands what they read. Not all kids know English and that's a problem if they want to learn on their own because many resources are in English. So the wiki helps them understand things better because it's in their own language. Um. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Linda, for introducing the wikis. Um, uh, we talked about how, what, what, what should um, each of us talk about and I want to talk about the history of the um, first a wiki that is another language than English, the German wiki, and we started with a forum. There was much communication in the German forum between German young scratchers, but the problem with the forum is that there is a question, there is an answer, there is a discussion, but everything goes away after a few, it, it doesn't get in the deep. Uh, of uh, a thing. So many of the young scratcher and the forms said we need must something more sophisticated than the forum where you can answer questions and get in communication. We need something wo where all our knowledge is represented in our language. And we thought we all knew Wikipedia. You, you might know it in your own language. I hope here are many other languages that have no wiki at all because this is the main point why we, ha why we are here. Please come to our poster session and ask us uh, how you can start a wiki in your own language and in Germany in the forum we said we want to build it up and we uh, hosted a server we installed a media wiki and then we started and it was a very hard and long work uh, for a community of people but we had already six to, uh, six to seven people in the forum and we have a constant flow of new people coming to the wiki and when we were really successful in Germany and build it up our community even the translating for Scratch is based on that community. So the, the Scratch wiki in Germany is the main focus point for the German community. It's really important now. Um, we said we want to have that for other languages. We want other languages help to build it up. And the funny thing is not French, not Spanish was the first uh, wiki we made. We asked in the forum who wants and it was Indonesia. So we have a really great Indonesia Scratch wiki where devoted people from Indonesia Indonesia put their knowledge in. I can can show it. Perhaps you can show it to them. The, the Indonesia you can can go from there, and uh, completely in Indonesian language. 
And then we had a Russian Scratch Wiki, we had a Japanese Scratch Wiki. Sometimes the community get a little bit low and then it rises again. You can always see how many people added it. And we found out it is very hard to build up a wiki, especially with Italian people. Um, they started and it doesn't get so. And we said after the last uh, Scratch conference in Amsterdam, we said we must something, do something more. And we invented our, we call it test wiki. That is a giant sandbox for every language where it's very easy to build your own Scratch wiki because all the templates of the English wiki, templates are a great opportunity to do much better articles in the wiki. And all the pictures of the English wiki are already there. So you only have to copy and paste an English article in your language uh, area and then translate every English word and you have a perfect article. That was not the case with the German and the Japanese and the other wikis. It was so heavy for them because they had to start completely at zero. But then when we had the test wiki, we found out that this is a really successful way. And we have one candidate here. Matthew, please come up to um, um, the stage. He is Mr. Scratch Wiki in Fran French and he is not from France. <laughs> he is from a country with much more or less French-speaking people. He is from Belgium. He lives near Brussels. And he has a, had a great success with our um, uh, test um, a scratch wiki and build it the language France there and then he was always pushing pushing me I want to get in free because this is a multilingual sandbox wiki where you can try it and then if you said I've got 50 articles it's really great I want to set my language free and they pushed me and now it's a complete free wiki out of the sandbox and how many articles do you get in your wiki now oh, uh, about 200 200 articles We've got 600 in the German and there are over, over 1,000 in the English wiki. So this uh, man here is really a proof that it can be a success. So um, don't hesitate to ask questions to Linda, me and Matthew how that works. Come to our poster session and naturally you are free to ask questions here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now it's the turn of our next speaker that comes from very, very far away. I'm, I think you will enjoy it. Let's uh, three. Uh, no. Uh, this, no this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Hello, hello everyone. Let me introduce myself briefly. I am 15 years old and middle school student from South Korea. Today I'd like to talk about my dream and young scratcher life in Korea. This slide shows ordinary middle school or high school classroom in Korea. Korean middle school students are very busy because most of Korean students are studying in school for seven hours. And they study at home or climb school all day long, even night. And also they study at climb schools. A lot of parents and students are interested in entering university excessively. These subjects are included in college entrance examination. So I am my friend. So I am my friend. Don't have leisure time easily. If we have spare time, we play online game. I think the reason that Korean gamer is the best of the world is because of much stress. So most of Korean students stuck in a lot of exam. Korean students have the lowest satisfaction of their life compared to students' satisfaction from OECD nations. They don't know what is the purpose of the study. 
However, I don't want to follow their life. I have a dream. I, I want to be a bassist and creative scratcher or game developer and logo creator. I really like to do something creative work. But I think that there is a huge gap between ordinary Korean students and me. I'm really happy when I make logos because something I was thinking because became the artifact and it could make out of people smile. So I made these logos to many creators. If you want to get the logo artifact, contact, contact me after my presentation. Scratch is creative and powerful tool for expressing my idea. I'm really happy to create Scratch projects or draw characters. I have been learning programming from early age because my father is a computer science educator. So fortunately, I met Scratch at 10 years ago, but normal Korean students don't get this opportunity. I created some Scratch projects for Book or Webtoon and won some prizes for them. Through these experiences, my life is changing and I try to get capability for programmer and white hacker, which is my dream. I practiced some programming languages, Entry, Scratch, and JavaScript. Through these activities, I could get something like an achievement, compute, computational thinking, and so on. In these days, in Korea, computing education is starting. But many schools, including my school, do not support computing class. Therefore, a lot of students don't know Scratch software or programming languages. Unlike other students, I know Scratch and how to code. So I could make the club of making game in my school. It's a VO. It means open, view, operate. The reason of starting this club is that I want to help my friends make game themselves. My future plan is to be Tarim Vazir. <laughs> I saw her at MIT Scratch conference in last year. I'm very impressed by her work. So I made my club in this year and I help them for creative work. I want to practice for 4P. Play, passion, pure project. It is the scratch speed. I really hope computing education is spreading to K-12 and my friends will be scratchers. Also, next time, I want to be a team with my friends and I would, to, would like to participate in various computing events. I met Scratch earlier and that experience changed my life as well as fathers. I would like to share my experiences with international Scratchers. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, excellent presentation, Scratchers, inspired by other Scratchers. And we are not living in Korea because we've got another amazing presentation right now. Uh, it's. Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay. I'm, my name is Sung Hoon Kim I'm from Korea. I'm elementary school teacher in at, uh, edu Minister of Education, and I work for EBS Educational Program System. Also, I work. i studied at uh, Korea University Graduate School. And Swan Kim is my, uh, professor. He is in charge of this project. Is him? <laughs> okay. Uh, we uh, we are we will talk about our. Educational situation in Korea. Uh, in Korea, uh, government is really big, big uh, power on public schools. So, uh, 
since three years, years ago, the government uh, instantly said we will have to students to, to improve computation thinking. And so, you teachers, you should teach them computer education. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So since 2018, secondary, whole secondary school students, they have to learn computer education, uh, specifically coding education. And elementary, also 2019, they also started, start, have to start this coding education. But, uh, but uh, as a teacher, I'm really uh, confused about what is computer thinking is. So can some anybody uh, explain what is com com uh, computational thinking and oh sorry <laughs> and how can we assess computational thinking? Uh, thanks to uh, Siesta or uh, IST and Scratch as team, they suggested some amazing uh, framework how to assess the computer thinking. But honestly, is now. Uh, it's now helpful to me because there are many differences between uh, in Korea and other countries. So uh, there are many different cultural background and national curriculum is very different. So we uh, we organize this this uh, survey like this. It's really confused, uh, this, <laughs> but it's very simple. Uh, first thing we will uh, reshape this computer. Th computation thinking component, and then we make some development of ed educational model. It's along with uh, evidence-centered design model, and then we will make some task and debugging task. And to the goal, we will finally identify computer thinking concept and component and design assessment model of computer thinking in elementary and secondary model. Uh, it's our plan, but we we have some a little bit achievement in so far. First thing is we will make an effective indicator. It is based on SR education report, uh, maybe 2016. Uh, we choose two area and seven component. And next thing is we want to assess automatically. So we got, a, got an inspiration from Dr. Scratch. So we made some pilot system called the analysis system. So we have made uh, two times, but yeah, there is some problem. So we, we try to fix it. And so that is a future work. Along the ECD stage, we will have made three pilot steps. First and second one is we almost done, but in the future, uh, we will get hold this space, and I hope we will, I have a chance to introduce our outfit in next uh, Scratch conference. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm James from Co Club. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about quickly what Co Club is. If you don't know, we're a, um, an international network of free extracurricular coding clubs for young people, aged nine to thirteen. Um, we are based in London and Cambridge. Also work for Raspberry Pi. We're a program of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, um, and I'm going to talk uh, really briefly about a particular area of the program, and um, that's about um, how we've developed a Scratch curriculum. Um, and the curriculum is all about kind of the guiding principles of what Mitch was talking about earlier, um, but also reaching the hard to reach areas, um, breaking down barriers and perceptions about coding and programming, um, and also kind of reaching the hard to reach, whether that's young people um, in rural areas, young people with disabilities, um, even young people who find, like I was, coding and programming to be this intimidating thing that 
it's just way away from me and I can't kind of get in there. But Scratch, we've, we've developed a curriculum that's the kind of gateway into that. Um, and the best way for me to first off talk about it is for you to meet Emily. Um, Emily lives in Espirito Santo in Brazil in a favela. Um, she has no internet at home and the electricity in the favela is, is on and off. Um, there's no computing curriculum at her school. Um, and she has no access to hardware, so she, she was a very hard to reach young person. Um, um, and a local volunteer called Emilio, who's a computer science um, graduate, he decided to open a code club. He went onto our website, um, found our curriculum, and we supported him to open a code club in the community there. Um, and now each week, um, Emily, you can see she loves Scratch here, she's got a nice certificate. Um, she goes for one hour every week to learn Scratch. Um, and Emilio, within the, the volunteer, says that he wants everyone in the club to go on and learn computer science, and that's his kind of passion. But he also says that if they don't, it's okay, because they're learning to be creative and express themselves um, and having fun, which is the whole em embodiment of the Code Club program. Um, also, Emily's just one of 155,000 young people around the world that are um, engaging in the program. We've got um, other areas orphanages in eastern Ukraine which is still in the midst of a civil war um, and they have bad access to electricity as well. There's um, Native American uh, regions in northern Canada which are completely inaccessible by road um, and young people there are learning to code in the code clubs there. We've got special educational needs schools in the UK which um, lots of young people with Asperger's and autism um, go through our program and, and find it uh, almost kind of coping mechanisms, the process of learning code is for, for, for them very, very kind of useful and um, calming for them and they're often isolated from mainstream education. Um, and Maori communities in New Zealand and Australia um, also learn code with, with, with Code Club. Um, yeah, uh, why, why is it so accessible? The recipe for a Code Club um, is really easy. There's, you just need a venue, you need a volunteer who doesn't need to have any coding experience, quite like myself was about a year ago. Um, a teacher, some projects from our website. And we teach. Um, we have very step-by-step -step instructions, so the kids work through the instructions um, in quite a visual, in a, in quite a visual way. Um, and there's, we are introducing key programming concepts throughout, um, or kind of every week. Um, and it means you can create something different with each project. So one of the things that's really important is um, about changing perceptions, is about focusing on the kind of end goal rather than the journey, and not talking about kind of technical jargon. Um, focusing on whether it's kind of building a game or an animation or a quiz. Um, that is a really, we find a really powerful way of engaging young people that may have not been involved or, or would have been intimidated by the subject um, before. Um, and the volunteer model means, because we don't have kind of paid practitioners going in and, and teaching it a certain way, that the, the model is modified and flexible, so diverse volunteers equal diverse communities. Um, and it means because there's no experience needed, anyone can teach a code club. Parents, teachers, students, um, even you know, it's just even older people that kind of want to know a little bit about this world that was was once cut off to them. They can go in and, and teach a code club. Um, and the really other important thing is, I think what, what everyone's been talking about in the last couple of days is about personalisation and that that practical application. So here's an example of at the end of a code club session in um, New Zealand, they create their own projects based on um, their cultural heritage, and they find that to be a way of protecting and, and communicating their cultural heritage through Scratch. Um, and that is a really powerful thing for us. So what do we want them to leave with at the end? Um, and it's, it, another thing is kind of the will. We want them to have the ability to pursue digital making, um, wherever that might be. But also, if they don't, that's fine. Um, that's, it's completely acceptable. Like We've got planning and designing. They reflect and improve their code. And they learn to fail and build resilience, which for us is a super important skill in all areas of life. So it, it doesn't matter if they don't go on and study computer science after. That's absolutely fine. Um, and, it, and it sits in the Raspberry Pi digital making curriculum, just so you can see here, this is where Scratch sits. And I'm going to send this to everyone and you can kind of engage with it and ask some questions. Um, but there's like physical computing and Raspberry Pi stuff over here. But this is Scratch and this is just learning to be a creator in any way that you want. Um, and just a little bit about where we are. We're in 125 countries now. Um, and it's one of the, the powerful reasons why it's scaled is because it's such an easy model and it's volunteer led. Um, and anyone can do it. So um, the only re we're not in northern Russia and North Korea, which is the next big step for us.
Um, and the difference we're making, it's working. We've got nearly 12,000 clubs in 125 countries. 40% of co-clubs are attended by girls, which is a super important um, thing for us to, to protect and build as well. Um, 15,000 volunteers, 40% are non-educators. Uh, and the curriculum's been translated, which I was really interested in. The, in the, um, it's been translated into 28 languages from Japanese to Hebrew, and we want more of that. Um, yeah, so what's next for us, very briefly? Um, we want more clubs, more volunteers, as much as we can. There's um, 155,000 young people that went for our programme, but 670 million 9 to 13-year-olds, so we've got a lot of work to do. Um, and we want more localised resources to help us translate and break down local barriers and localising our, our programme. Scratch 2.0 is offline on Pi now, which means that you do not need an internet connection to open a co-club, which opens up lots and lots of doors for us um, and our partners. Um, and we've also got, I'll mention Moonhack, which is a big um, global event that's run by our, our co-club friends in uh, Australia, and it's a way for everyone to get behind one big movement and get as many kids coding on one day as possible. Um, and our big mission here is we won't stop learning. We won't stop until learning to code is as normal as learning to read and write. Um, and that's us. So please ask some questions. We're here with the leaders of Co Club Croatia, Co Club France, um, and Co Club Spain and Catalonia and Co Club Australia. We're outside in the foyer. We're going to do a poster session, and I'd love to talk more about what we do. And yeah. So, we've got one last presentation before uh, the discussion. Last but not least. <laughs> Are you sure, Frank? Five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. Uh, we take a photo for us. Uh, hello everyone, uh, we're from Poland, my name is Iwona, uh, next to Adam and Anna. Uh, we represent a uh, nationwide uh, program Coding Masters and uh, we are third time in Scratch Conference. Uh, today we uh, talk about uh, what we are doing in Poland with teachers and uh, children. Yeah, we have uh, we have started uh, in um, 2013 and now this summer we have finished the fourth um, edition uh, of our program. We work with 4,000 teachers all over the Poland uh, who work uh, in 1,700 schools uh, and uh, with uh, over uh, 100,000 students. Um, we are proud of uh, our trainers, uh, for, uh, 40 trainers all over the, uh, Poland. Um, they are really great teachers, active teachers, uh, and they are basis of this program. Uh, and I think this, uh, these numbers uh, are really impressive, but the most important for us, it's not, num it's not a number, but something else. It's values. And the strange thing is, we are happy to be here because uh, actually we, are in, uh, we share those values, all of us. Uh, so thank you very much for this. Um, and uh, I'd like to say, it's not important uh, what tool you use, uh, it's important who, you, uh, uh, who uses it, and uh, we're not going to show you some online uh, tools, but more offline. Okay. So we're going to play a game. Uh, this game... Are you ready? Yeah, it's going to be in French. Uh, we don't with French. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with preschoolers, uh, we do some games to uh, teach them some basics of programming, of coding. Uh, and this is the example of it. So, uh, we're going to count to three, but we are going to count in turns. So, when I say un, it's one in French. Oh, un, it's one, deux, it's two, and trois is three. So, when I say un, you say deux, and I say trois. 
Okay, let's test it. Oh. Trois. Great. Super. Uh, okay. Once again, but a bit faster. Oh. Trois. Great. Do. Ah. We got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, when. Uh, next step. What? Next step. Okay. That's, this is next step. Uh, okay. So now we're gonna change uh, the third uh, the third number into some something else. Uh, since the only thing I know in French is je ne parle pas français, we're gonna uh, we're gonna use uh, word coding. Okay. Oh, um, coding. Okay. Next next step. We're gonna change the into like. Oh. Um, Coding. Coding. Great. And the final step. Last. I. Like. Coding. So. Like. I. Like. Coding. Perfect. Uh, there are many errors when you play uh, this game with kids, and that's awesome. Uh, okay. Next step. Next play is very difficult. Uh, do you uh, can you see uh, four pictures? Okay, uh, car, cat, uh, carrot, uh, and sheep. Uh, when I say and uh, show, I uh, or uh, Anna, uh, car, uh, you will do right hand up and Screw the screwing bulb. Uh, when I say uh, cat, you. Meow. Perfect. Meow, meow. <laughs> when I when I show a carrot, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, and clapping the hands. And last uh, sheep, uh, hand up, hand down, for free. Something like a wave. Uh, okay. Stand up, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, super. Perfect. Now, now. <laughs> and last. Now, now. You are the best. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Now I would like to invite you to uh, our third game. Uh, there is a board uh, with uh, 25 uh, little uh, squares. Uh, in the middle we have a cat. Uh, I will uh, tell you and tell him some directions. Up, down, left, right. Uh, look at him, but uh, he will be walking, but uh, only in your imagination, okay? Uh, your task uh, is to shout out when uh, he will be... Um, outside. Outside the board, yeah. Is it clear? Okay. Uh, I will do it really slowly. Up, right, right, left, uh, down, down, uh, right, right, up. out. Yes, great. Once more. Uh, up, left, left. Uh, he, he's here. He's here in the middle. Um, uh, up, up, left, down, down, left, right, left. Uh, up, up, right, down, left, left, right. Yes, great, great, okay. Uh, so, we don't have time, uh, so we uh, invite you for a poster session. Um, thank you. And contact for us.
So it's time for questions for all the speakers. Uh, please don't, don't, do not stay in front of the caption. Yeah, thank you. Um, so questions, comments, come on. We have people that have traveled a long time to go come here. <laughs> Usually the first question is, uh, will the slides be available? Yes, they will be. Uh, somewhere. First question. Yeah, to the Polish team, uh, why do you concentrate on offline activities? Is there a specific reason for that? Uh, mainly because preschoolers, uh, we think pre preschool kids uh, don't need to um, actually interact with uh, tablets uh, from the start. So we uh, go uh, softly from the offline to into online and we're using Scratch Junior for that. Uh, yes, but uh, this program, Coding Masters, uh, it's not only for the youngest kids uh, because we teach uh, kids uh, from 4 to 18 years old. More questions? Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm going to ask about Code Club International. Are, are your clubs only in low-income neighborhoods or can a um, private school, for example, open up a club also, and um, how do one mm, market, it's called Club International, do you help with them um, getting the word out within their communities? Thank yeah, you. Very, very good question. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just me focusing on one particular area of the program that like, I'm passionate about and is interesting to me, but uh, the, the ethos of Code Club, the, the values are that um, there should be no barrier for a child to learn code and it should be free. So anyone can set up a code club in any venue. Lots and lots of private schools have code clubs. Um, the website has resources and materials to download, but also it's a peer community, so you can connect with other volunteers and hear from teachers or students that have run clubs, and they're, they're happy to help. And in, in each country, there's a, the, the kind of the foundation of a community in some way. So if there's in whichever country you're interested in, I can connect, introduce you to some volunteers that are currently doing it. So yeah. Any more? No, no more questions. So thank you very much. Big applause for you. Thank you. And after the poster session, uh, I think it's at four more Ignite talks uh, here at four o'clock. Thank you very much.